So I put my first YouTube video out on the 30th of March 2016 and at that time I had no idea how it would be received or whether anyone would actually receive it for that matter. So here I am one year later and I have just over 28,000 subscribers and for the first time in March I've managed more than half a million views for the month. Not bad, better than I expected 12 months ago, but not great. I've still got a lot of work to do. And when I look back at that first video, it's kind of cringy and I think I've improved but I can still do better and I hope to still be around at this time next year. So about that, there's a lot of angst out there at the moment about monetization, about big corporations pulling ads from YouTube and of course YouTube is scrambling to assuage those corporations that their ads won't show up on, shall we say, objectionable content. I'll come back to that in a minute. And who could blame YouTube? After the revenue split with creators, YouTube pulled in about $5.6 billion last year. This is their bread and butter. So of course they're going to demonetize content if their advertisers don't like it. And who can blame advertisers for not wanting their videos to show up on ISIS beheadings or neo-Nazi propaganda, especially in the age of hyper-activism where social justice types are ready to shame you into compliance if you step out of line on even more minor issues. Brand image is one of the most important commodities a company has, and they will protect it vigilantly. As Warren Buffett famously quipped, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. The worry I see for content creators like myself and others is that in their zeal to remove ads from objectionable material, some of us will get swept up along the way. Consider for a moment this story from the Wall Street Journal, reprinted in The Australian. Racist content prompts big exodus from YouTube. Google's automated system placed ads for some of the world's biggest brands, including Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Amazon.com and Microsoft, on five YouTube videos peddling racist and anti-Semitic content, according to a review by the Wall Street Journal. Now this sounds suspiciously like PewDiePie, and as we know, that amounted to a manufactured hit piece. Still, you can understand companies not wanting to be associated with anti-Semitic and Nazi imagery, even if it is for comedic value. Then further down, we get this. A Google spokeswoman reiterated on Friday the company's statement from earlier in the week that it was improving its policies and enforcement to better police content, pull more ads from hateful, offensive and derogatory videos and give advertisers more control over where their ads appeared. Of course, hateful, offensive and derogatory are all in the eye of the beholder and YouTube doesn't help the matter with their vague community guidelines. Then we hear in Australia that major Australian companies had pulled ads over MGTOW content that called Ida Buttrose a hag. Now I know exactly the TV segment they're referring to. The part I don't like is how this story is framed, calling Peter Lloyd a controversial author. Of course, he's nothing of the sort. His book Stand By Your Manhood, which I thoroughly recommend by the way, is only controversial by virtue of the fact no one ever gets airtime to talk about these issues. Then a couple of days later, Australia's biggest telco, Telstra, joined the fray, pulling ads because a men's rights activist had attacked Fairfax media columnist Clementine Ford. Now anyone familiar with Clementine Ford knows she deservedly attracts plenty of criticism. But the video suggests that Twitter feminists are a pack of hmm. Now regardless of whether that claim is true, you can't get upset and claim but my free speech when ads get withdrawn from videos like that. It's in direct contravention of YouTube's community guidelines. But again, where's the line? Does a video debunking the wage gap qualify as offensive, especially since certain companies have now adopted that line as part of their marketing push? Now personally, I've only had one video demonetized in the last week, and that was on an old live stream with Beware of Darkness. And as I often do on live streams, I let go with the expletives, so I understand why that one was demonetized. Now I did notice a drop in revenue, but nothing of the sort being reported by others. But worse than that, people are starting to get whacked with demonetization. Gary Awesome, who I'm sure many of you know, has had 84 or just over a third of his videos demonetized in the last 24 hours. And Dave Cullen tweeted this out about Black Pigeon Speaks just a few hours ago. 
And I've also noticed, and so have others, that ads just aren't playing on some videos. Now, that's not surprising given the number of large companies that have pulled ads. There's obviously not enough to go around. So I guess if you aren't being demonetized but have a drop of revenue, the best thing to do is heed Kraut and T's advice, keep calm and carry on. But I can't help think I'm just waiting around to get whacked by the demonetization police. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to give you the pitch about supporting my Patreon because new media is trying to wipe us all off YouTube and I might have to go out and get a real job. Here's harmful opinions on the topic. For some reason, so many YouTubers are very uh, traditional about it. This is my job and I need to get a living from it. Maybe I'm even entitled to that because I try so hard and put so much work in. Thank you very, very much for any contributions, but I'm not on board with this narrative at all. YouTube suppressing stuff, censoring stuff, blah blah blah. Yeah, we need to fucking fight that. Me getting a bit less money across my channels? No, that's fine, that's my problem. Don't worry about it. You don't need to give me any money because of that. I mean, back before my channel got wrecked, there was a period of time where every single fucking video I put out would be demonetized. I'd challenge it and get it back, but that was after the bulk of views were on it. If that's a problem for me, I need to fix it. I need to get a shirt designs and offer you better merchandise. I need to offer you better rewards on Patreon or something like that. What I don't need to do is go, the media's out to get me. We're fighting a war. You need to fund me or we'll lose and I'll disappear. Fuck that. The war needs to be against censorship, not against my wallet being lighter. The two things are intertwined, but the bit you need to fight isn't My wallet being lighter, it's the system that suppresses the spread of ideas directly. So I agree with most of that, although I might take the snark down a notch or two. Look, I said this before back on my 20,000 sub video. I chose to do this YouTube thing full time. I chose to expose myself to the fickle mistress that is YouTube. And so it's up to me to diversify my income stream, to come up with new sources of revenue. And that's why I have a shop. That's why I have a Patreon. And I'm extremely grateful for those 90 fantastically generous individuals. But as Harmful said, I'm not on board with the please keep me afloat narrative. Now if I do get the shaft from YouTube, you bet I'll be pissed. Make no mistake about it. And I reserve the right to push the panic button at that time. But it's on me to figure it out. Now I don't want to dismiss the idea that so-called old media is trying to elbow out YouTube creators. There's definitely some evidence of that. But do you think YouTube cares? I mean, think about it. Whilst it's individual content creators that are the ones that drew the eyeballs and made YouTube the platform that it is today, they still haven't figured out how to make money out of it. YouTube is a break-even enterprise at best. So if this push into YouTube TV is successful, Do you think YouTube's going to lose any sleep over demonetizing the skeptosphere? Let's put some numbers around it. According to Statistic Brain, whose credibility I have no idea about, 5 billion videos are viewed on YouTube every day. Now note that that says videos, which I assume is the same as views. But if it isn't, then what I'm about to say is much worse. So I took an average of PewDiePie's view counts over the last 12 months from March 2016 to February 2017. And it turns out he averages about 9.5 million views per day. So PewDiePie accounts for 0.2 of 1% of all YouTube views. So what do you think the entire skeptic, anti-SJW shit posting, slightly controversial, and I include people like Philip DeFranco in this group, comprise of the total views on YouTube? 3%? I don't know. I'm only guessing. But I doubt it's in double figures. YouTube is a business. And if they have to lose 3% or 5% of their views, what do they care if they can make money out of YouTube TV or some other venture? Sure, there'd be some backlash. But do you think you could rely on the solidarity of the YouTube skeptocracy? What if you're a decent-sized channel pulling in, say, 10 million views a month or more, and the ship starts going down and some mainstream media house throws you a line hey come over to our shop we'll pay you a couple of hundred grand a year but we'd like you to make some slight editorial changes to your content you know sanitize things a bit what are you going to do well a job is better than charity work 
Now I'm just shooting the breeze here. I have no idea how this will all play out. But even if you think it's the end of YouTube, the views will collapse and the platform will die, which I doubt, you're still going to need a plan. Hope is not a strategy. It's incumbent on creators to cultivate multiple revenue streams so you're not caught off guard standing there with your dick in the wind when this shit goes down. Now let's finish with some optimism or sort of. Keemstar and this guy Scarce did something I thought was a good idea. Now don't take this as an endorsement of Keemstar or his content. Not that he needs it from the likes of me. I tried to watch one of his videos once and couldn't get more than 15 seconds in before wanting to stab myself repeatedly in the face with an ice pick. But here's their idea. We have a plan. One of the companies that left YouTube and stopped putting advertisements here on YouTube is Pepsi. Coca-Cola, on the other hand, is still placing ads on YouTube. Imagine if Coca-Cola and Pepsi were your parents. And Coca-Cola has been there my whole life watching me grow. But Pepsi left me and wasn't there for my first bike ride. Pepsi wasn't there for my first kiss. Pepsi wasn't there for the sex talk. I had to have this awkward conversation with Coca-Cola. Yeah, Coca-Cola and me had a pretty long conversation the other night about gay sex. And trust me, it wasn't fun. We as YouTubers need to show these companies our influence. And we also need to show them how grateful we are to them. So here's the plan. <clears throat> I want everyone to go out and purchase a Coca-Cola. Take a selfie with your Coca-Cola and tweet at Coke on Twitter, hashtag thank you Coke. We need not just our fans to get involved, but other YouTubers. Because if us content creators come together and show the influence that we have, we can show these companies that it's a smart decision to advertise on YouTube. So get out there, purchase a Coca-Cola and use hashtag thank you Coke. So not bad, right? Instead of bemoaning the companies that withdrew their content, how about showing some support for the ones that haven't? Problem is though, as I read out to you before, Coke also pulled their advertising. So that led to the obvious fail video. But good try, boys. That's the kind of thinking we need. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I hope that didn't leave you too depressed. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts about the future of YouTube. See you next time.